Do you ever deal with imposter syndrome? Yes. And how do you deal with it at this level? Yeah, I still do. Um, I've had some situations where I was, you know, I'm coaching somebody who's doing something really, really significant. Maybe they've run like a big country or something like that. And I'm like, why in the world are they listening to me right now? I've literally had those experiences. I had a, I won't say which one, but I had a, I feel okay about, I'll give you, I'll give everybody permission to feel it. One of the people that I had, I have worked with was a former president. And um, he was telling me that his first week in office, he was, they were in a pretty stressful meeting and he leaned back in his seat, kind of like just to collect his thoughts. And he looked and over his shoulder was a picture of Abraham Lincoln. And it dawned on him in that moment, what in the world am I doing sitting here right now? You yeah. know, this is, this is like Lincoln's been here, you know, Kennedy's been here, Reagan, whoever you admire, right? He goes, yeah. it was just like an out of body experience. He goes, I literally sort of floated for a minute, like Saw I'm actually himself. sitting here mm. and I'm the actual president. So even somebody at that level had that experience and I have that happen sometimes. I remind myself, I had a great conversation when I was young. I just used this word about you with Wayne Dyer. He wrote a book called The Power of Intention. Beautiful. And I met him when he was writing the book. How'd so you meet him? I was running on the beach. I won an incentive trip in our financial company. The first trip I ever won to qualify. Yeah. And it was in Maui. I'd never been there before. And I got up. No one exercised back in those days. I was one of the first ever like business athlete people. That wasn't a thing. Well, no one did it. I go to the gyms on trips. No one was there. Okay. And I read a book called The Corporate Athlete by a guy named Grappel. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I'll be a corporate athlete, a business athlete. So I'm up running early before the sun's up on the beach in Maui. This dude's running towards me. We both have Sony Walkmans on. You know, like, listen to cassettes. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> this guy's bald. And he's got, like, a hairy back. And he's getting closer and closer. And I'm like, I don't want to bump into this dude's sweat, you know? Yeah. And as he gets Creating closer, I'm like, space. oh, my gosh, it's Wayne Dyer. And he <laughs> runs by me the other way. And I go... I took my Walkman. I go, Dr. Dyer, you changed my life. And he, had, he has a deep voice like me. And I'll never forget. He turns around and looks at me. He goes, I doubt that. I bet you changed your life. Mm. But how did I help you? And he starts to walk Such towards me. Such a Wayne me. Dyer and, thing to And say. I spent 90 minutes sitting on the beach with Wayne Dyer watching the sun come up. And when we were done, we became friends. And, but when we were done, he goes, Ed, I think you're going to change the world. Now, I, to this day, I have no idea whether or not he said that to everybody. I don't know. But he made me believe it. And he goes, and it's not because of your big brain, and it's not because you're a great communicator. He goes, it's because of your intentions. I can just tell you intend to really do great things and good for humans. And he goes, do me a favor. Never link your confidence to your abilities, which is very foreign because in baseball or when I, anything else, like, you get good at something. Skill, yeah. He goes, um, you'll always be chasing your tail. You'll never be good enough. He goes, when you're under pressure, you're worrying. He goes, I just want you to focus on your intentions. Get your... Get your confidence from your, you intend to make a difference. You intend to serve. You intend to do right by people. Just right now, before we started, I said, <sighs> That's good. I'm going to go over there really quick. You see how yeah. I disappeared? Yeah. I went over there. I said a little quick prayer. Mm. I reminded myself of my intentions to help people today. Mm. And I sit here pretty confident, not in my ability necessarily, but in my intent to serve. That's all you can bring to the table is your intention. So most of my life, my confidence has come from a trilogy. And in in the power of one more, I call it a trilogy. Mm -hmm. But it's my faith, my intentions, and then my ability to execute is third for me every single time. So I, my faith, I've got a God who loves me, that believes mm -hmm. in me, that's given me great giftedness, that put me here to make a difference. And my intent is to do well. My intent is to contribute. My intent is to serve. I get a lot of confidence from that. And then my ability to execute is third. I got a lot of ability, but sometimes you'll find yourself in a circumstance that may exceed your capacity, may exceed your, your preparation, ability. right? Yeah. What do you do in those moments? What are you going to rely on then, mm. right? What do you, at the highest level in sports, when I coach athletes, it's all predicated on ability because everybody was the best player on their high school team. In their best up. league, they're yep. all the best player on their college team. They're all the best. So at that level, the separator's ability, no, the separator's not ability. Intention. The separator's the ability to find your best performance at any given time. And for me, that's faith and intention. So when you unpack that, I'm just going to summarize it for everybody listening. It's beautiful because the imposter syndrome may start to creep up, but you just have to go back to intention. I may not be the president today. Yep. I may not be the billionaire. I may not be as skilled as the person I'm helping, mm -hmm. but I can go back to the core of who I know I am and why I'm showing up for this moment. And that is undeniable.